Guys, what are we looking at this morning? Well, we're going to take a look at a couple of Benchmade Osborne 940s. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if they're even the same knife. I'm not 100% sure they're even the same species anymore. But we're not going to look at them here. We're going to take a look at them from above. But first, you guys turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of music. <music> Before we get into this, uh, anybody have a recommendation for a better uh, iPhone or cell phone remote? Because I uh, I rage quit this one. So, yeah, it wouldn't work right. It's Sunday. It's Sunday, and I don't like doing any filming on Sunday, but I've got to get content out for you guys. So, All right, guys, had time to calm down. It never, it never comes out good when I'm angry when I start a video. So, yeah. Uh, at any rate, guys, these are – this is that, that Benchmade 940 that's done with that transparent knives regrind. Now, this re – or not regrind, but a reblade, I should say. Um, this blade resolves a lot of the issues that I had with the original 940. So we're going to do – we're going to do a quick look at this, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. And I'm going to tell you something that as much as I complain about certain things on this knife, I still love it. Um, this does resolve, but – kind of puts it outside of something I probably would get. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way and just take a look at this 940 with the transparent knives reblade. All right, guys. So let's take a look at this. What this is, is Brian has been doing, uh, making his own blades for an existing knife, the Benchmade 940. And he's done an incredibly good job of it. If you were to get this, you would not have known. Like you cannot look at this knife and tell that it was not made that way. Um, for the average person, like if they had never seen a Benchmade 940 and you showed them this, this is what they would think it was. Um, completely new blade that has resolved some of the issues that exist with the 940. Now, the owner on this has also changed the scales. We'll talk about those as well. These are flitanium titanium. These are made by flitanium. They're titanium scales. They are attractive, but, you know, we can get into that later. So this basically is a completely different knife. The only thing that you remained the st that has remained are the washers, the scales, the standoffs, and the hardware, including your access lock or your sliding bar lock. Other than that, like you have not maintained any, you basically have the shell that the blade and handles go on um, that Benchmade made. Everything else is different. So you're looking at a reblade that was done in M390 super, super thin. Like that is extremely thin. This thing cuts so well, even though it's not sharp. I have not resharpened this. I've been cutting down cardboard on a dull knife and it still is incredibly good at cutting. Now, is it completely slicked over? Well, in some places, yes. The blade geometry on this being so thin behind the edge, a lot like Ste Alex Steingrabber's knives, it still cuts even if your edge is dull, the blade is so thin, it still cuts through cardboard. Now, are you going to be able to cut a lot of stuff with it? No. I mean, the the cardboard would be the, about the limit. You wouldn't be able to use this dull to cut like rope or anything like that. But it is an M390. Nice broad blade. Beautiful harpoon on this. I guarantee that is a hand rubbed satin. That is so clean and consistent. That is an amazing job that Brian has done on these knives. Comes down, you can still see the spine of it, but it is beautifully done. No inconsistencies in the grind. He's got some of the most precise grinds I've ever seen. He has got a number seven on it, so I'm not 100% sure if this is number seven or if this was a seventh of this batch um, with the transparent knives markings on it. So you also, instead of a thumb stud, now have an opening aperture that allows you to open it. I actually prefer that to the thumb studs that come on the 940, but you know, I'll, we'll get into why you can't really do it. Um, the action on this is pretty smooth, but that's because I opened this up just a little bit. And anytime you have, anytime I've ever seen a Benchmade 940 that has this super fluid, smooth action like that, there's a little bit of blade play. And that's because there's so little 
tolerance for you to actually tighten that down and still to by the time you get rid of any little bit of wobble or blade play you're not going to have that free action it's going to be tight um but this thing is great the heat treat on this seems to be great i've actually sharpened this knife once before brian is really precise on his heat treat stuff so you know you get you get a very good blade that has extremely good geometry that cuts really well um and then when you when you look at all the other options for scales and stuff like that you can pretty much take your 940 and make it into your own knife now here's the thing the benchmade 940 is already a pretty expensive knife you know, you're looking at about $180, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure what this reblade costs, but I'm imagining that you would, between that reblade and this, you've basically doubled the price of that knife. And to tell you the truth, we're going to look at them side by side, and I'm going to tell you some of the reasons that I would still stick with this one. One is the price point. Well, this is attractive and stuff like this. You're looking at a knife that basically, by the time you get done with this, you've doubled the price of this. I mean, like seriously, you can't tell me you haven't. And I can't, I can't argue the price that Brian's doing on these because this is an incredibly well done blade. Having made knives, I'm going to tell you right now, to get your plunge precise like that, good clean finish, um, all of this being chamfered and tumbled and handled well, there's only a couple sp places where you can still see grind lines. And then to go through and do a super clean consistent swedge on this and hand satin it not a little amount of work and on top of that he's not making his own knife he has to make sure that his blades fit the lock that's already on this knife and so just having done such clean consistent work on this and having it come out so well hats off to you brian so let's go ahead and tell you why i wouldn't buy one of your blades brian <laughs> Nothing to do with craftsmanship, nothing to do with heat treat. Some of the heat treats on these, from what I understand, are amazingly good. But like I said, all I've ever done with this is sharpen this one uh, once before, and the heat treats seem to be right on point where I would expect it to be. So let's go ahead and let's see why I wouldn't buy one of these. So the Benchmade 940 is an iconic knife. Uh, it is a knife that I have wanted, had wanted for a long time. And it's 100% because of this aesthetic. You have a very clean, slim knife that gives you a full, large, full-size EDC in a small package. Thin, narrow blade. It pierces really well into things. This one is an S90V, and it cuts really well. In comparison, the lines and things that I love about this knife are gone in this knife. Not that they're not attractive. I just think that this would be better, better suited if Brian had just made his own knife. Nothing against Brian and, and offering people this option. It's great. That versatility is amazing. I just find that I like this thinness and cleanness of this knife much better. Now, other things about it. I do wish that it had a different opening. I wish that it was capable of having a, an area here where I had an aperture such as this and the main reason is do you see how much further down that is i have to reach further up it's not a big difference but it's like this starts where this ends if i'm all the way down here i can roll that out nice and comfortable clean but this blade just seems like it matches this knife so much better and it could just be that i've gotten so used to this 940 coming down and it just disappears down here. It's so it's so clean. Uh, the blade shape on it is a very attractive blade shape. I love the blade shape on this. It's a little thick, and I'm not gonna lie, it's incredibly thick behind the edge, but it still cuts relatively well. And the S90V is not a bad steel. It just seems to me that this is a much cleaner representation. So Let's go ahead and talk about the scales, but hang on just a second. I have to take care of so the wife is still pretty sore and needed me to help her reach something on the shelf. Okay, so the next thing about these two knives that is a no-go for me are these aftermarket scales. These are an attractive set of scales. Don't get me wrong. Flitanium, I believe, is where he got these. They do okay work. I've had problems with these scales not fitting up quite the way you want and things like that, but these seem to be pretty well done. They are an attractive pattern. You do have a very good tactile feel on this uh, because the finish on this is 
pretty heavily um, blasted, so you get a really good feel. Um, but the fact is that this and this are so far apart in the way they look. This is just the a. This is the typical, you know, epitome of what you would expect in a 940. This is the original version. Yeah, this is a nine. This is a S90B blade that I took from another knife. Um, but you're looking at you know the classic 940 right here and i think that the appeal of the 940 is that it looks like this now granted i have taken because i'm not a fan of green really uh the green that they use the od green i've refinished mine yeah i did it and it looks a little battle worn and things like that but this aluminum scale has got a very good look to it i like the lines it's not uncomfortable in hand those little fillets areas here that are kind of like hollowed out are really comfortable. You get some tactile hand feel. You get some grip that you don't get from these. These are really flat. So in hand, like my fingers just, I've gotten so accustomed to my fingers dropping down into there. They just sit right there. Oops, sorry about that. And it gives you a comfortable grip. Now, are these bad? No, these are incredibly nice scales and they are attractive. I just don't think that it's something I want in this knife. And like I said, the other thing about this is this just is, this is not a 940. This is something new. Like I said, I don't, they're not even this, they're not even close to the same knife. I'm not sure that they're even the same species at this point. It's a hybrid. Um, is it attractive? Is it well done? Yes, incredibly. But is it something I want? No, I think that this just has appealed to me for so long that I don't think, I don't think that I would shy or that I would stray away from this. If I was going to get a 940, I would get this. Now, like I said, you do have the option. You know, I have two blades already for this knife. There's another one just like this, an S30V. I could always get one of these and then swap it out as I see fit. But then, like I said, you get into the prices of what you're paying for that. Now, the last reason I don't think I would do this is because, as well as this cuts, this would never be my hard use everyday carry EDC. I love this knife for what it is. I love the beauty of it. I love the Osborne design. It's so clean, but this is not a knife that I carry for like heavy cutting, heavy duty use because the handle's really thin on this. So allow me to show you what I would carry. Like neither one of these would be one I would carry. And that's why I wouldn't spend the money to upgrade this to something like this even though this blade cuts better when there's another option that I would show you for what I typically would use. Guys, I grabbed some examples of what I would grab if I was gonna do heavy cutting. If I'm just carrying around like day-to-day -day use, yeah, this. This does, like I said, res re you know, it resolves some of the issues with the, the thickness of the blade and things like that. But if I'm gonna do a lot of heavy cutting, I want something that's going to fill my hand a little bit more. These handles are thin. Doing much cutting with this, you get a lot of fatigue. Something that's larger fills your hand better, has more ergonomic grip. Um, you're going to be able to cut a lot better. And then these knives, this knife and this knife, both larger, thicker handle, more organ ergonomic, very thin blade, comes down to the edge, broader blade, more, more versatile utilitarian cutter, and then something like this as well, big beefy handle that's going to fill my hand better, nice broad blade that comes down, gets you a lot more cutting potential. Now, these are larger knives, so like I said, I don't think even, even though I have the 940, it's not like a big heavy duty EDC for me. It's just something I throw in my pocket if I'm just running around. So putting the, putting the effort into making this try to cut comparable to these, I just don't think makes sense for me. So that's why I wouldn't do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, is it attractive? Is it great? Yes. Is it something awesome that you have now some ability to customize your knife with some of these reblades? Yes. And Brian is doing an amazing job. That is probably one of the best ground blades, hand ground blades I've seen. And I've made some pretty good hand ground blades. And I can tell you, he's doing it way better, way better than I ever did. Uh, when I was making making full custom knives, so there you go, guys. Just 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 taking a good look at it, making some comparison. Um, I I do like this, but it's just having carried it a little bit. I'm like, you know, it just doesn't hit that sweet spot for me. So, all right, guys, that's it on this one. Let's turn this around, do some final thoughts, and get you guys out and about on your day.
Guys, like I said at the tabletop, that this transparent knives reblade that Brian did uh, resolves a lot of the issues that I have with the 940. The only issue I have is, while it's really cool, it takes away the thing that made the 940 something I wanted. The aesthetic of the 940 has, has kind of completely been removed. Great, great work on this Brie blade though. Just something I don't think is something I would have purchased. Guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like. If you wanna support the channel, it's as simple as like I always say, and like everyone always says, like, share, subscribe. Hit the bell icon, drop a comment, make sure you're getting notifications. I try to put out two videos a day. Uh, sometimes I miss the mark, but you know, if you want to get notified, you got to make sure that the notifications on your device are turned on as well. Other ways you can support the channel if you want to do it financially, however, uh, down in the description below, I have a membership where you can get in on different tiers. I have benefits based on tier. Pick the tier that gets you what you want out of the membership, but everyone saves $5 on my sharpening service and everyone has access to the Gilded server. Um, other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below. Anything you purchase through those affiliate links, I get a little bit of it at checkout. It doesn't cost you anything. All kinds of stuff down there, recommended EDC gear and sharpening items and tools. And the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. I have set up a coupon code that works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. That coupon code is Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me a picture of you wearing my merchandise, I will put it in a video. Guys, I love you all. Keep it clean in the comments section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.